Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. When shopping for your family's meals, do you know where you can find Alaska-grown products? Everywhere. They're available at your local grocery stores and farmer's markets across the state. Alaska-grown products are fresher and more nutritious, and buying local helps grow our economy. So just look for the Alaska-grown label when you shop, or ask your grocer where the Alaska-grown products are. Remember, Alaska-grown. It's closer, fresher, better. And it's all Alaska-grown. Alieska Pipeline Service Company, sustaining Alaska's pipeline and its operations today and into the future. The National Weather Service. Welcome to Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Perry Daney. This is your weather for August 8, 2016. Uh, you can follow us on, uh, on our website, weather.gov slash Alaska. Also, or you can email us at nws.ar.tvweather at noaa.gov. Starting off with tonight's hazards uh, in the uh, uh, Susitna Valley here, we have a flood advisory, uh, minor flooding that will be for along the Yenta uh, River there, and that will be until 11.15 a.m. Wednesday. And this will be upstream and downstream of, of uh, Lake uh, Creek along the Yenta River. Start off with the satellite for tonight. Uh, as we put it into loop, uh, we have this low pressure system pushing in, and the cold front and the occluded front, ex uh, occluded front extending through the uh, south central, extending over uh, into the uh, lower Cusquin Valley all, as well. As it moves farther uh, uh, north, uh, it's pushing the, the stream of moisture into the um, uh, south central and farther interior. Uh, as of uh, uh, 24 hours, uh, the Valdez and uh, um, uh, Yakutat has received uh, a 1.10 inches of, of precip. Uh, and farther out west, uh, we have another low pressure system uh, here, uh, just south of the chain here, uh, south of Dutch, uh, include low pressure system. They'll, they'll continue to move eastward and that'll bring some uh, a swath of moisture and light rain to the uh, central Aleutians. Um, and then out of the southeast panhandle, you continue to have that uh, trailing uh, cold front, a warm front extending uh, just off the coast of uh, the southeast panhandle. And that will continue to southerly flow with uh, uh, plenty of light rain and winds for tonight. Now starting it with the... Uh, um, Put in the loop here again with the, the western Aleutians, we have a uh, strong uh, uh, occluded low that's starting to push in and it's a, a, a nice comma cloud here that, that start, they'll eventually start showing up. But you nice, have a nice shield here that's spreading over the western Aleutians. So look for a strong southwesterly flow in, the, in this region. Uh, in the northern barren, you're kind of like in a call area. So you got a little bit of stratus in here, uh, a little bit of fog, but uh, it's, it's not, not too bad. Uh, farther north, uh, you have another low pressure system sitting over the Fairbanks and Fairbanks uh, you had some uh, continued light rain and some thunderstorms today pushing up north. Um, anyway, you're going to have a nice cloud cover here along the Arctic coastline with that uh, low pressure in that region. And you can see the flow is all south east to easterly and it's wrapping around the, the low, these low pressure systems sitting in the southwest as well uh, just over a Fairbanks region. So you're continued on the back side here going through the northern bearing. So you'll have some uh, stratus to continue to filter on down into the region. For tonight's weather, uh, here's a uh, occluded low pressure system sitting in the uh, lower Cusquin Valley, trailing occluded front, and uh, you got, the, uh, as mentioned before, the warm front sitting over the uh, southeast panhandle, uh, just south of the Dixon entrance, and continuing onshore flow. Uh, then farther north, just south of the Brooks Range, you have another low uh, cold front, and as this occluded front went through the uh, south central today, uh, we did get a thunderstorm report at the, the uh, Anchorage uh, Airport, and uh, so it continued that's moving farther north up through the Susitna Valley. They had uh, thunderstorms as well, so it's definitely active. 
Uh, farther north, you're going to have a northeast flow with this low pressure system sitting just east of Prudhoe Bay. And so you'll have some scattered showers and some light fog reporting there at Barrow. For tonight's forecast, uh, this low pressure system uh, will move farther uh, north. Uh, the trailing occluded front will start to fall apart. You will see some uh, 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 isolated thunderstorms with this uh, front. And then that, that cold front it will push through the uh, southeast panhandle. So you'll start uh, seeing t uh, showers will start tapering off to scattered. Uh, so that'll, that'll be good. And you got a weak trough pushing through the southeast uh, region here at Kenai, so there will be clearing skies here, uh, so no precipitation with that. But uh, farther south, you have that uh, included low pressure system mentioned before, this south of, of Dutch, so you'll have continued uh, southerly flow uh, that will bring some wraparound moisture uh, into that region. And pretty much the, the Pribilofs, uh, you know, a weak trough pushing through, some scattered showers there. And there's a stronger occluded low just coming off the Kamchatka Peninsula, and that will bring a southwesterly flow in here. Actually. And southwest we flow with some light rain and scattered showers behind the front. For Tuesday's forecast, that uh, occluded low pressure system moves farther into the western uh, uh, bearing, and then you'll have the warm front extending through the uh, uh, central Aleutians. And so a continued uh, swath of moisture with that. Uh, farther north, you're going to have that uh, low pressure system just pretty much stalling out here, the stationary front extending over uh, into the uh, Yukon Territory, and uh, you'll have continued uh, for Tuesday. Uh, uh, Along the uh, uh, Fairbanks region and southwestern into the lower Cuscoma Valley, you'll have uh, some isolated uh, uh, thunderstorms. Along the uh, north coast and southeast uh, Panhandle, continued onshore flow, some light rain uh, in the morning, but uh, you have a weak low pressure system, system just sitting south of, uh, of the uh, eastern Aleutians here, and that'll bring some, some light rain into the, into the region, nothing major there. Wednesday's forecast, uh, low pressure systems just falling apart here. Continued uh, isolated rain, uh, thunderstorms in the uh, uh, just north of the Alaska Range. And with this low pressure system sitting in the Gulf and the trailing uh, uh, trough sitting along the southeast panhandle, you'll have continued onshore flow and light rain. And uh, uh, that'll be pretty much it for, uh, for Wednesday, just overcast conditions. That stronger occluded low pressure system is wrapping up. And uh, it'll bring a continued... Uh, 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 gale force winds here to the uh, western Aleutians. In the central Aleutians, uh, you're going to have a pretty much uh, low stratus and just leftover moisture from this low as it's starting to fill. Uh, temperatures as of 3 p.m. today, uh, as you can see, the southeast, uh, you had uh, temperatures in the, in the uh, in the uh, upper 50s to low 60s, uh, 62 there at uh, uh, Hainesway, and then uh, you had 60 uh, at Skagway, uh, 60 at Yakutat. Uh, you go farther north uh, in, in the southeast panhandle here, well, I'll correct you, in the northern Gulf, you have uh, 58 at, uh, at Cordova, and you had 64 at Anchorage, and 67, a little warmer there at Talkeetna. Again, with that low pressure system here and a warm front pushing through your White, that's right, higher temperatures. Uh, Fairbanks was coming in at 70. Uh, they actually had the high today. Uh, they got up to 74. They, so they had the high temperature for today in, in Alaska, 74. Uh, and then for uh, the southwest, um, pretty much all uh, in the uh, lower 60s here, uh, again, with uh, this low pressure system sitting right here in the YK Delta region. Uh, so strong, subtly push your warmer air. And it's, you can see pretty much uh, in the lower 60s to mid 60s. You go farther north, uh, you're going to have uh, 70 that, at Salawak, that's pretty, pretty warm there, and 62 at uh, Kotzebue. Um, then along the chain, uh, pretty much all along, the, uh, you're going to be in the low, low 60s here, uh, uh, 60 at uh, Cold Bay. Uh, the Privlofs came in at uh, the mid-50s, uh, 53 at Shemya, and pretty much uh, 57, 55 there at Adak and Akka. Uh, tonight's low temperatures, the coolest again will be over the, the northern uh, Arctic coastline, uh, again with the high, uh, with the northeasterly flow, colder, cooler air. Um, Barrel did have in the last 24 hours the coolest temperature for uh, Alaska of 37. And then as you go uh, farther south, again with this low, low pressure systems here and southwesterly flow, warmer air being pushed up in through the southwest uh, region into the interior, that's why it's uh, tonight's lows will be continued uh, uh, in the mid-50s or lower 50s. The southeast, you're going to have pretty much uh, onshore flow, plenty of cloud cover, so it's going to keep temperatures up. So you have temperatures in the mid-50s. Tomorrow's high temperatures, uh, not surprising, uh, 68 there in uh, um, 
the Yukon Territory, and that uh, um, that will continue again with that warm front in that region. Cooler temperatures farther north along Barrow. Uh, again, southwesterly flow throughout the, 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 the Pribilofs into the uh, uh, southwest region. So you're going to have temperatures in the lower 60s uh, and pushing all the way up into to the uh, uh, Seward Peninsula as well. Over the southeast panhandle, uh, all in the uh, pretty much lower 60s, 64 at uh, Kalawek uh, and uh, 63 at uh, Skagway. Along the chain, pretty much uh, uh, as before, uh, highs in the upper 50s to lower 60s. As you go on out, again, with that warm, uh, colluded pressure system coming in here, that's why the temperatures are, are remaining pretty high, 58 there at Shemya. Flying weather for uh, tomorrow morning, uh, again, with these uh, lowest conditions with this uh, occluded system starting to push in through the western Aleutians and then with a trailing northeasterly flow and a low front in this region bringing a wraparound moisture you're going to have lower conditions here with stratus and fog uh, and then southwesterly flow along the uh, upslope conditions here along the uh, Aleutian and Alaska range and then uh, also over the YK Delta region uh, you'll have lower conditions uh, isolated again the isolated thunderstorms there uh, in, in the Fairbanks region uh, along the northern coast and southeast panhandle, uh, IFR to marginal VFR conditions, again with all the onshore flow, uh, plenty uh, of stratus and fog there. And farther north with that trailing uh, system that's <coughs> over the uh, Alaska range, um, or the Brooks range that is, uh, you'll bring a, a northeast flow and a little stratus in there. Tomorrow afternoon, uh, a little bit of clearing out here in the lower Cusquin Valley and extending uh, just north of the, of the uh, Alaska range. So you'll see uh, some instability there with a the cool air, uh, cold, cold pocket aloft there and the warmer temperatures creating instability here. So we, we'll have some isolated thunderstorms there. Again, throughout the barrier, you're going to have IFR to marginal VFR conditions with this, again, this uh, include low pressure system that's starting to push in plenty of moisture into the, uh, uh, into the barrier. And farther north, that northeasterly flow will bring continued uh, uh, low stratus in there, and that's why we're, we're having the low IFR conditions. The southeast and uh, northern uh, coastal communities, pretty much all marginal VFR conditions. Uh, Kodiak will be uh, uh, VFR conditions there, uh, and that'll be, again, with the onshore flow and low stratus uh, in the areas. Tomorrow's uh, past conditions, uh, Anaktuvik, marginal VFR conditions. Uh, Add again, uh, marginal VFR conditions. Uh, Lake Clark and Merrill, IFR to marginal VFR. And you will have some uh, isolated thunderstorms uh, just west of the pass there in the lower Cusquin Valley. Uh, then for uh, rainy, marginal to VFR conditions and some uh, uh, isolated thunderstorms. Windy, IFR to marginal VFR. Isabel, VFR conditions. Mantasca, VFR conditions. Tanita, marginal to VFR conditions. Portage VFR, marginal VFR conditions. Chillicook and White, IFR to marginal VFR conditions. And then tomorrow's uh, morning's uh, freezing levels, not surprising, they're pretty high here. 8,000 in the southwest region and uh, central, uh, south central region. And then with this warm uh, occluded front uh, that's pushing in, uh, just a large swath of warm, warm temperatures moving in. So you're going to have a higher freezing levels there. Uh, and then the southeast as well, southeast panhandle, you're going to have a high pressure here with, that's farther down in the North Pacific. But again, the southwesterly flow here, you're going to have warmer conditions. That's why the freezing levels are quite high. Tomorrow's icing, uh, above 8,000 pretty much along the, the coastline uh, the, from Seward Peninsula on to the uh, YK Delta region as well as the Bristol Bay interior. And then along uh, the Alaska Range uh, as well as into the um, Susitna Valley, then extending down into the northern coastal communities there. Uh, the southeast as well uh, into the southeast panhandle, you'll have above 11,000 there, 11,000 for uh, isolated to uh, light. Uh, icing there and farther north or along the, the uh, Arctic coastline above 10,000. Tomorrow's jet stream again uh, the same pattern here strong northwesterly flow coming across the Kamchatka Peninsula into the westerly flow as the transition to southwesterly coming up into the Gulf again this this sets up a nice trough here through the uh, uh, Bering region and it's a southwest flow just pumping in the moisture as you can see uh, we've had today and then along the southeast panhandle it Panel and transitions back to northwesterly 80 to 65 knots with this high pressure sitting farther south in the North Pacific. Farther north, you have the low sitting farther north in uh, the uh, Beaufort Sea here, uh, farther north there. Uh, it's northwesterly flow there, 70, then becoming southwesterly uh, at 80 knots. 
Tomorrow's 9,000 foot winds. Again, these uh, double barrel lows here, a weak cyclonic flow around them, 10, 15 knots. Uh, the low, low pressure sitting over just off of Kamchatka, a southwest leaf, 15 to 25 knots southwest on the backside, or actually uh, northwest. And then pretty much you've got a, strong, a stronger jet here, uh, 45 knots there just south of the western Aleutians. Over the southeast or um, the northern Gulf, you're going to have southwesterly flow, 20 to 30 knots. And then it transitions again with this high pressure here uh, to uh, east, um, westerly flow, 20 to 25 knots. Tomorrow's 3,000 foot winds, again, a low pressure system, weak, 10, 15 knots, cyclonic flow around the lows that over the Seward Peninsula. Uh, the the uh, Gulf and the Southeast Panhandle are pretty much southwesterly flow, a little tighter gradient here, 25 to 30, 30 knots, but uh, then it's all east, uh, correction, westerly, 15 to 20 as you go inland. And then tomorrow's turbulence, uh, you're going to have below 4,000 along, along the western Aleutians extending to ADAC, and that's uh, again with that uh, strong occluded system that's pushing in. And again, don't forget you're going to have the uh, isolated thunderstorms along the lower Cuscoman Valley and the north of the Brooks Range um, in that region. We'll be back after this with your Alaska weather and your marine weather. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mary O'Connor with the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation and the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health. Thanks for tuning in and thanks to Alaska Public Media for allowing us to bring you hangar flying. This evening we are pleased to have back on our program Matt Freeman. Matt's an airport project engineer with the FAA's Airports Division here in Anchorage. Welcome back to Hangar Flying, Matt. Thank you, Mary. It's good to be here. So we're going to continue talking a little bit more about this project that helps pilots uh, practice and hone their skills for precision landings and takeoffs in a measured and controlled environment before they go out and do off-airport operations. So Matt, which airports have runways that are marked this season? Right now, Fairbanks International Ski Strip and then also Ninana uh, Turf Runway. So actually the paint markings, instead of play, being placed on gravel, they're on turf uh, first. That's great. Um, any chance of getting any airports uh, closer to Anchorage marked? Well, I'd love to see them. Uh, we do have, the, there are modifications to standards for the Wasilla uh, gravel runway, the Palmer Municipal gravel runway, Goose Bay, uh, Goose Bay, of course, is gravel, and then there's also a, a gravel strip down at Soldatna. Um, I, I think a, a big part of it is getting uh, uh, volunteers uh, to go out and actually, you know, do the work to uh, to paint them. I mean, it does take time, it, it does take resources, and uh, uh, what, but what we found that he won the gravel, won the practice gravel runway markings are out there to be used, pilots really like them. There's mm -hmm. really a, 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 it seems like there's a, a great benefit of, of having a, an area to practice precision takeoff and landings. So I agree and I absolutely see the benefit in having this available for pilots and there are a lot of pilots in the Anchorage Bowl. Mm -hmm. What does somebody need to do if they're interested in having any of the airports that you mentioned um, marked and having it made into a practice runway? Well, of course, we have six airports that already have modifications of standards in place. The paperwork's done. Uh, the, the template for marking the gravel runways is done. Uh, my suggestion is uh, Tom George seems to be a good connection for uh, knowing groups that are, uh, are, uh, are interested in, in possibly gathering. Uh, and uh, it also takes talking to the airport manager and making sure that uh, they're uh, uh, the, the resources are set up, the runway can be closed, and, uh, uh, and, it's, and the markings actually done to the design standard. Okay, so we'd need to coordinate with the airport manager, then it's easier to have a group, plus it sounds like a lot of fun uh, to get a group of people to go out and do the marking, and then obviously there's getting the word out, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because we'd want all pilots that are interested in using the runways to know that it's an option. Well, it's yes, exactly, and and part of that is uh, it seems that the word of mouth gets out uh, fairly quick. I mean, a place like uh, Goose Bay or or Palmer, uh, there, there's it seems to be a, a real magnet for people that once they find out those markings are there, 
They're on them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the people that go out and do the actual markings, um, as you mentioned, they're usually part of a team, but they don't necessarily have to be pilots. It can be friends mm -hmm. or even somebody mm -hmm. that just likes getting outdoors and doing something um, that's good with a, a safety mm -hmm. idea in mind. Um, but hooking up with one of these groups would be the best way to do that then. Yes, yeah. I mean, there, there's certainly an aviation component to it. And uh, uh, I think the state of Alaska has, uh, has, has uh, with Goose Bay, have, have brought some of their employees. I've gone over there to help out. They have the truck and the sprayer and so forth. Uh, Palmer Municipal, the, the uh, 99 women's pilots were, uh, uh, were marking that runway for a while. Um, Wasilla is typically this, the uh, city that has marked that gravel runway, as well as Soldatna. The city uh, has also done the, uh, has chose to do that work now. Okay, so there are some great opportunities for engagement with airport managers, um, airport owners, cities, um, as well as any of the user groups, um, which may or may not be pilots. Yeah, there there are, and and one of the benefits that we found with these uh, with these different users groups, and we've seen this in, the, in Fairbanks as well as uh, Fairbanks International Airport and others, is that the the pilots are actually getting together with airport owner, the operations, and they're interacting, creating some great relationships, mm -hmm. and the pilots are actually able to out, go out physically on the runway when it's closed and work on the runway. And it's, 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 a, it's a new experience for, uh, for pilots to actually be, you know, driving a vehicle or walking and, and working on runway surface. It's pretty exciting for them. It's created a, a, just a great network of uh, um, and connections that we hadn't really expected in the past. It sounds like a great opportunity all the way around. Matt, thanks for being here. It's been a pleasure to have you on the show, and as always, it's good working with you. All right, Mary, thank you. It's been great working with you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you've enjoyed our show, and if you are a pilot, perhaps you'll consider uh, marking one of the runways and getting together with management and any of your aviation groups and aviation friends to do so. Thank you for watching Hangar Flying and thank you to Alaska Public Media for sponsoring us. Until next time, fly safely. Welcome back to your Alaska weather. Starting off with the uh, sea ice analysis, uh, again, uh, you still have some uh, light ice here along the Arctic coastline. The heavier stuff is farther uh, north. Uh, tonight's, uh, actually Tuesday's marine forecast for the southeast, again, uh, you're going to have uh, on the inside waters a subtly flow, uh, and it, it shifts to more northwesterly as you get closer to the Dixon entrance. Otherwise, a southwesterly flow to, uh, to westerly flow along the uh, the uh, outside waters as you get closer to Yakutat. Again, they're all uh, below small craft and wave heights are going to be around seven feet. For Wednesday, uh, continued uh, subtly flow in the uh, inside waters, uh, 15 to 20 knots, uh, wave heights three to four, and then outside waters, southwesterly flow, uh, again, that's predominantly through the Gulf, southwesterly flow, uh, and you'll have uh, 20 knots, wave heights seven to eight feet. Uh, south Central, uh, for Tuesday, the marine forecast, uh, Light and variable winds in the Prince William Sound region, but otherwise predominantly all southwesterly flow. Again, with that uh, uh, southwesterly flow that's predominantly uh, farther south uh, of the uh, um, uh, south central. Anyway, uh, you're, you're going to have less than small craft winds on the, uh, the outside waters here, 15 knots, uh, waves uh, 2 to 4 feet, a little higher there. Uh, just out of, uh, of the Cordova region, but uh, the, uh, through the northern Gulf, uh, northern uh, uh, Cook Inlet and southern Cook, you're going to have five knots, uh, five feet that is, and then uh, southwesterly until you get southerly there in, in the Shelikoff region, and wave, wave heights a little lower there. For uh, Wednesday, uh, light and variable through the Prince William Sound region as well, I mean the, uh, the Barren Islands region as well as into the Shelikoff region. And then you're going to have a north uh, easterly flow coming out of the Prince William Sound extending down into the eastern side of the Kenai. And then southwesterly flow 10 knots uh, up through the uh, Cook Inlet. Uh, again, your wave heights are going to be 2 to 5 feet uh, and then uh, 3 to 5 here uh, from Kodiak uh, extending all the way up to Prince William Sound. For the Alaska Peninsula for Tuesday, uh, you'll have light and variable on the Pacific side, then southwesterly flow uh, 15 knots uh, on the uh, 
uh, bearing side and wave heights uh, three to four uh, on the uh, bearing side and uh, six feet on the Pacific side. For uh, Wednesday, uh, pretty much a southwesterly flow in the Bristol Bay um, region, two feet for wave height. Light and variable as you get uh, down to the Cape Seward Peninsula. Um, and then uh, you're going to have southwesterly flow uh, just uh, south of the Schumigan Islands and extending up to, you're going to have light and variable as you get closer to the southern end of the Kodiak Island. And then for uh, Tuesday, the marine forecast for the Aleutian Islands, <clears throat> predominantly all southwesterly flow. You're going to get uh, small craft winds in here, a little stronger as you go farther out towards the, the Shemya. Again, with that strong uh, cooler front that's starting to push in and the warm front. That's why they're picking up more. Uh, the, along the, from Dutch, uh, southwesterly flow, a little weaker, 20 to 10 knots on the Pacific side. And then for Wednesday, uh, predominantly all southwesterly, small craft again. Uh, again, the, uh, you're going to have gale force winds southerly at 45 knots, a wave heights 22 there at Shemya, uh, and extending uh, eastward to uh, uh, the Red Islands region. And then southwesterly flow on the, bearing, on the Pacific side, 10 knots, 11, 10, 10 feet to 11 feet on the, uh, on the Pacific side. And then for Tuesday marine forecast, light and variable again through the, uh, through the uh, uh, boy, that St. Matthew Island region as well as to the Nunavik Island and then Norley on the northern bearing. Wednesday marine forecast, southwest we flow through the, uh, the uh, Custom Bay region and then light and variable along the, the coastline predominantly, uh, easterly there from St. Matthew Island. And then for uh, Tuesday marine forecast for our coastline, predominantly all northeasterly, 15 to 20 knots. And then for Wednesday, predominantly all northeasterly flow uh, 10, uh, 15 to 20 knots, uh, wave heights 5 to 6 feet. And then for tonight's forecast, you get that low pressure system sitting over the, the uh, Seward Peninsula, uh, weak trough over the uh, northern Gulf. You're going to have uh, isolated showers farther inland. And then an occluded low that's farther south of the chain here. That's it for your weather. Join us tomorrow. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.